Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, we're going to talk about pest prevention and disease. We're going to get up close with the different uh, vegetables I'm growing, show you how they're doing. Um, maybe there's, you know, some vegetables that you may want to grow in your garden. Talk about what's new and we could start right here with this group of tomatoes and if you want to subscribe I'll be doing two minute videos on tomato care for the whole season. I will link some of them in this video. The sound you hear in the background real quick, yes that's cicadas. They're going crazy. You'll see them buzzing by. They'll probably be landing on me. They're just, they're out of control. So in this space I have five heirloom tomatoes. They're growing up posts obviously and I'm going to be thinning them down to just a single stem. It'll, they'll look something like that. There's not going to be any suckers coming out the sides. And I put them in closely because when you do single stem pruning, sometimes there aren't enough leaves to protect your tomatoes from getting sun scald. The leaves, you know, if the tomato sits in the sun, the sun beats down on it, it'll leave a mark, it scalds it. So because I'm doing single stem, these are a lot closely more, uh, yeah, these are planted a lot more closely together. There's one of those cicadas I'll be showing as we walk around. And by putting them closely together, they will shade and protect each other. By keeping them a single stem, I'll be able to pack a bunch of heirloom tomatoes into that small spot. It's an experiment, but I think it'll go perfectly well. Now, first week of June, my cilantro has totally bolted. It's flowering. I leave a bunch of this around to bring in good insects, pollinators and such. You can do things to bring in pollinators. You can rarely do things to bring in the bad insects or the diseases. What do I mean? What I want to say is it's not your fault if your plants get diseases, if your plants get pests. They've been around for millions of years. They're used to your environment, wherever your garden is. They come back year after year. Diseases will overwinter in weeds and grasses. So it's not like it's your soil that's contaminated or if you get a disease on your plant, you gotta get rid of everything. They're around, they're gonna show up. And all you can really do is keep a journal and do preventive practices, preventive spraying. Start spraying a couple weeks before the pest and disease come. Your plants will manage better and you'll get a bigger harvest. This is a prepping station I built a couple years ago. I pot up plants, grow plants in here. I grow radishes and lettuce in there. So this is the harvest of radishes I just took out of here this morning out of the three flower boxes. I will link the video that shows you how I grew these. There's about 25 radishes in here. They're cool weather crops. We're at about June 4th or 5th. I just had a cicada buzz my head. Um, they're crazy. You can hear that shrilling sound that'll be around for a while. That's a cicada. They're landing all over my back on the back of my head. Anyway, these are cool weather crops, so it's June 4th, 5th. It's getting too warm for radishes, so I'll put them back in the ground come August, September, October. But this is a wonderful harvest. They're easy to grow. I just come out in the morning, pick the different crops, prep them out here, cut and drop everything. That will go to compost, and these will go out to friends and family. Just a quick update on the sweet potatoes. They're doing well. Now that they've been established, they're gonna send out their vines really, um, really quickly. And you just guide them up and start training them where you want them to go. In the front there, I dropped in some pepper plants, had some extra plants, figured they can kind of hang over this way. We'll see what happens. The other area that I cleaned up was back here in the uh, No Dig Garden. And the No Dig Garden is wonderful. I highly recommend it. Look at that beautiful soil. It's dry, but it still looks great. I'm making a tomato hedge there that I will take care of that with hydrogen peroxide. That's going to be pruned pretty heavily. They won't be single stems, but it'll be a thick hedge of tomatoes coming up here that I'll be treating with hydrogen peroxide spray. And that will keep off the leaf, um, so, well, it'll keep off leaf spot disease, but it'll also keep off the early blight that starts showing up around July in this area. My last wave of peas still doing well, even though it's in the 90s for the last couple of days and it's going to be that hot for a while. If you keep the peas well watered, there's no mulch in here, but it gets shaded out by the cilantro. Keep the ground cooler. They're gonna last longer. You'll get more of a harvest. I've taken out most of my lettuces and cool weather crops. 
You can see the white butterfly flying around. That's the butterfly that lays the green cabbage worm or worms on your kales, collards, cabbages, all that. The peas are still doing extremely well. We'll give an up close look at them. I've harvested so many peas off of here, it's crazy. And they're still producing. Flowers are still coming even with the high heat. Just keep everything well watered. Those are potatoes in there. Last wave of radishes, I'm not sure if they're gonna work, but it's, you know, 90 degrees is way too hot for radishes. This is one of my root crop areas. Carrots in there, in the back, beets. But I wanna show you one of the most, I think, underrated vegetables. And that is the purple top turnip. These are packed closely together, you know, with more spacing. Like if this one wasn't there, then this one would be bigger over here. Look at that turnip. I make mashed potatoes with these. Half turnips, half potatoes. Absolutely delicious, easy to grow. I highly recommend them. They even do well through the summer, so I plant these in the uh, spring, of course. I will put in another planting of the purple tops soon, and then I really plant heavily again in August for them to grow in the fall. And this is actually the second round. Not thinned as much as I should have. All the radishes were prepped, and I do recommend, there's about 100 here now, and that just came out of this space, is planting your radishes in succession, which means we put down a row, once they germinate, two weeks later we put in the next row, two weeks later after they germinate the next row. This way, unless you want 100 radishes at once, you're not getting 100, 200, 300 radishes all at one time. You'll get them spaced out over the cool weather season of the spring. Purple top turnips, another cicada. Look at these, are crazy. Purple top turnips are really easy to grow. I highly recommend them. They get huge. This is a great size. These were spaced out more. These were packed more closely together. I didn't get to thinning them. So that's what happens if you don't space out some of your crops. They still develop, but they may develop in a different shape. These were pushed together, so they're more cylindrical than round, where these had a good gap in between. These are gonna get prepped too, same way as the radishes, and I will cut these up, boil them with potatoes, and make turnip and mashed potato um, or turnip, what would it be? Yeah, well, I'll make mashed potatoes with turnips in it. Something like that. It's absolutely delicious. I think they're just not grown enough. They're delicious. They taste somewhere between like, I don't know, cabbage, sweet radish, great flesh once you peel them. Peas are continuing to grow over here in this container. And we harvested a lot of these yesterday for a vegetable soup I made. Took out the spinach and radishes that were in there, added some containers, have a determinate tomato going, a couple peppers in there. Just getting everything transitioned over to the summer. With the summer heat, things are going crazy. We'll take a look at that collard uh, green that's in there, because the plant is amazing and it's been protected with that ag fabric, which if you've been following me on the ramblings, you know I was a little bit hesitant because I don't really like the look, but it's a no-brainer. If you use the agricultural fabric, protect your your collards, your kales, your cabbages, that white moth that's flying around or butterfly will leave them alone. Got everything set up with warm weather crops in here. They're doing really well. Lettuce was in there, that's gone. Three indeterminate tomatoes. They'll get bottom pruned for reasons I've explained in my two minute tip videos. Again, if you wanna subscribe and follow that. These will get trellised. What I wanted to show you, these are bush beans too, by the way, some snapdragons, is this cucumber plant has all kinds of marks on the leaves, and this is where I think we start to panic. Now, the older leaves are all beat up. The newer leaves right there are looking nice and green. I don't know what that is. We could go through the list. Iron deficiency, um, insects, cucumber beetles, uh, leaf spot, all that kind of stuff. That will just drive us crazy. It doesn't really matter what it is because I know what comes and affects my cucumber plants. It'll be cucumber beetles, it'll be spider mites, and then it'll be some sort of leaf spot disease that gets there. So this week I'll be spraying this, the undersides, with peppermint oil, and I'll be spraying this with a um, fungicide that I decide to use. One for insects, one for 
the fungus that may affect it, take care of the plant, get a nice harvest, manage the pests and disease, diseases down, that's the goal. You're never trying to completely eradicate something to 100%. I mean, it'd be great if you can do it, but it's not possible. But you just want to reduce it greatly so you get a nice harvest. I will be growing more cucumber plants, squash plants, squash plants, zucchini plants to replace these, you know, over the next four to six weeks. More peas, these are grown in 10 gallon containers. These are root pouches that we sell at the seed shop, which I highly recommend. And if you didn't notice, this is a whole fabric pot garden. What you want come about now, the beginning of June, is you want to look at your cucumber plants and you want them to look like that. They're growing upward, the stalks are nice and stocky, new leaves are coming in, nice and green. I can see a little bit of the spot stuff starting on there, but you can't do much about it. But again, manage the pests down, manage the diseases down, keep the plant happy, healthy, and growing, and we'll get tons of cucumbers off of there. That's going to cover this whole fence eventually. Let's go over, we'll stay on this side for now. Let's go over to this kale plant. So, well, here's a comparison. These are some kales and cabbages that I'm growing over here, getting sprayed with the neem oil that I sell. Again, if you buy neem oil, you want 100% cold pressed and you want the as a direct in there. But they look pretty good. I've been taking lots of leaves off of here and eating those. Four plants is plenty for two people. Purple cabbage is starting to form, even got a head of broccoli that's starting to loosen and flower I'll cut that it's too hot I mean that's kind of bitter tasting I'll still eat it I'll eat these leaves down you know but the butterflies is walking around I think they were used to coming here and just having all this cabbage and kale and everything spread all over the place and now they're having a hard time finding the right plants to lay their eggs on so probably I'll start seeing their um, worms on other plants because they'll you know they go for what they love the best but then they go for secondary plants if they can't find what they need even in here these plants are little look at the peppers i'm going to leave them on there just keep them fed and watered i'll pick those off these plants will get larger sometimes there's concern you know if the plant is that big should i pick the pepper off i mean that's really up to you look at the plant if it's mostly green and growing then it's good to go these are kind of beat up and yellow they're starting to come back so i think that they're fine let me just give you a good shot of all the spots on that cucumber plant so that is part of a concern that was a cicada that was on my neck but we'll give that a spray and it, it will be fine so over here you saw four collard greens. This is one I have not harvested yet. Let me cut and open this up so you can see it. I mean, look how beautiful that is. It actually, I've been thinking that looks like Brussels sprouts to me. Now, it's quite possible with things I forget that I put a Brussels sprout in here but I've never grown a collard green this big maybe it does something like that well wow, that's pretty cool <laughs> either way I still eat the leaves of Brussels sprouts but it's absolutely beautiful not a single mark on it because I've been able to prevent that butterfly from laying eggs on there so let me zip it up because there's dozens of them around now and I think I will do this more next year so take notes like things that work make a note and I'll probably set all these containers up all three of them just like that it means less spraying for me less work this is my sawdust experiment these plants are a little bit yellowish that did heat up look crazy right in my ear that did heat up from putting in nitrogen in there. So the wood, the carbon, the nitrogen, the green, so to speak, heated that up. So they got a little bit beat up. They were just like this. These are nice and green, they're in better soil. But I wanna see if I can grow in sawdust. So right now, as this is an experiment, first thing I would do is fill this up with sawdust, 
put in my fish emulsion. I'm using some synthetic fertilizers. Put the nitrogen in, let that sit for two weeks, do its thing, and then put the plants in. Last of my lettuce. I'll eat that over the next two days. Cleared out everything that was in here. I have different kinds of beans coming up. That's okra in between the snapdragons. They're going to be thin to one plant. They get massive. Still keeping this Swiss chard because I think it's beautiful. Cleared out the rest here. Again, more cucumber plants. And you can see that pattern starting on there too. So I really have to get the uh, defensive sprays down now. Not in a week, not in two weeks, and they will really do okay. Pulled all the winter crops out of here, have some beets in there. Um, those are orange beets in the back, red beets, some okra in there. I'm, I'm doing pretty good keeping space open and not over planting. You know, I don't need more tomato plants. I have enough cucumber plants for now. So as I'm taking care of those cucumber plants and they get, you know, I don't know, maybe three foot long vines, I'll have other cucumbers started, ready to go in the ground, and I will just keep rotating them in. Eventually, your cucumbers get past the disease cycle or the pest cycle, and they do really well. So it's not like you put in all your cucumbers, they get beat up, you get frustrated, you throw them out, you're done. Just keep dropping in new cukes, new zooks, new squash, and keep them going for the season. Here's the first round of beets. They're doing really well. They're most ready to eat. I like them to get a little bit bigger. The leafy greens are delicious. And again, here is the first round of turnips. Look at that one. That's bigger than the other one. If you put them too closely together, they're going to look like that, but they're still delicious. Get some turnips, purple top turnips in the ground. Spaced out well here. Some pepper plants that I dropped in that were left over. That's a black zucchini in the corner. Pickling cucumbers. Starting to trellis. Those are probably market moor or straight A cucumbers. Starting to trellis them. Up the trellis, obviously. More national pickling. So mix up the different size cucumbers. The uh, smaller ones are delicious. The green beans are starting to take off doing really well. They're going to start climbing. This is a space that I keep for my hose. No, this is a space that isn't planted yet, um, but I'm dropping the mulch down, killing off the weeds, and I'll be growing something in here. Maybe squash and zucchini. I already have enough squash and zucchini, so I'm trying to stick to my guns and not put in six or eight squash and zucchini plants. I can't give it away fast enough. I can't eat it quick enough. It just breeds more pests and more diseases, so I'd rather concentrate on a couple plants, keep them well, than plant too many. Along the fence, tomatoes. I mean, this one is almost waist high. When you look in here too, you see those markings on the leaves, some holes. That's nothing really to worry about. It's probably flea beetles. I'll give them some dust tonight, wash everything off in the morning wanted to show you this because I've been these are gonna need to be sprayed again but look at all the apples there are four different apple species spliced onto this one plant and you can see some fungal issues coming back I always forget the name of it but I've been spraying this by now every leaf would look something like that times five but I'll hit this with the spray again and I'm gonna be able to come out here and just pick apples in about four weeks or so. Here are the two zucchini and squash plants that I put in first and you can see how big they get. So remember, there were two plants in here. They've been thinned down to one. This is why you do that because they get huge and I have them a little more closely together than you might wanna do if you're just starting. You know, you could shift this one over about a foot Leaves look great, nice and green. You want to look in there, see the squash forming. That's the yellow squash. I don't know if there are any on here yet. None on there. But nice and green. Two plants that you can take care of is better than five plants that you can't do as good as job on taking care of them. 
you know it's a lot easier to come and spray top side bottom side real quick of all of this take a quick look for pests be done with it then bouncing all over your garden so that's the other thing is try and keep like plants in the same space I tried the strategy of spreading them out maybe the bugs and insects or the bugs and diseases wouldn't find them they still do but by concentrating them in the like space I have to travel less to take care of them so I would rather do that more tomato plants the peppers are doing really really well there's another well I already showed you that one there is um, I forget what I was going to say. So the peppers are doing really well. Nice and green, nice and leafy. No more nitrogen for these guys. They're established. I'm going to be giving them a 01010 liquid fertilizer, higher phosphorus, higher potassium, along with my potato plants, just to see if that helps with the development of fruit. We'll see how that goes. So here is one side of my asparagus that I have posts in. I used to have them strung up and you can see how they just start flopping everywhere and taking up that space. Well on this side, I'm using metal now instead of string. I've basically taken the metal wire all the way down on this side and on that side and you can see how it contains them so that I can walk right in this space now. I can trim the asparagus back and all this growing space will probably be pumpkins or melons that I grow out of here. And then I'm just gonna let them trail in kind of this hidden part of the garden. Peppers are all getting cages. These are those wimpy tomato cages that do, don't do much for tomatoes, but they're good for peppers to keep the branches from breaking. But they all look great. The main tomato area, I mean these are just getting huge. Tomatoes are coming in everywhere. It's about time for a top dressing or side dressing, same principle. I'll be doing that. If you haven't seen the video on mulching, grass clippings are great. You want to keep moisture in the surface because they send out tons of surface roots. Most vegetable plants do but tomatoes especially when we top dress we're just going to scatter compost or granular fertilizer on there I'll be doing a video on both of those just want to show you this corner herbs this is mostly for flowers for frogs for toads beneficial insects all coming in and hanging out in that space we'll get over there in a second so these are the tomatoes I put in first and you can see from last time when I was tying them up, I pre-tie some of the jute on there. These are ready to get tied up again. I will remove more of the leaves from the bottom now that the plants grow, grew to keep that um, bottom open for airflow and a disease splash barrier. Look, some beautiful tomatoes are coming in. So on the right side are determinate varieties and this will be my standard chaotic pruning. I'll be removing suckers and leaves and all that, but I'm not really doing one stem, two stem, three stem, although I'll be doing videos on that. These I just kind of let grow and shape and tie up. Some of the tomatoes growing here, some of the branches may reach over to this post. I'll tie them over there, you know, and just prune as I wish for production. And this plant's getting mass up. So these are all my cherry tomatoes. So the branches, the limbs, the suckers, production stems that are all growing this way will be trimmed back. And I'll be weaving a lot all through here. I mean, look at all the flowers. That is plenty of tomatoes just from this side. I'll be sending them up here. The little guys over here that were beat up in yellow from that video several weeks back totally taking off totally healthy nothing to worry about getting weaved right up there now for your prevention routine you're just gonna have to set it there's no exact time like I mean people ask me how often should I do this how often should I do that and the truth is you do it when you need to do it different gardening zones will cause will bring different problems and therefore you're gonna have to spray at different rates and stuff like that but if you get started two weeks before they arrive 
spraying every 10 to 14 days is a pretty good way to manage to keep those pests and diseases from, from taking hold and wrecking your crops. The corn in here, I planted 81 seeds. Only about 56 came up, but that'll be good enough. I mean, it's doing wonderful, wonderfully. Lots of water for corn, they like that. Towers are doing well. A mistake I made with the towers is right in here. I had the plant that was over there, and you see how big that is in the red container. It was shading off everything. So when everything was not fully grown, all the containers looked great, but I had to move all the flower pots out. I have to move them somewhere just to let more light in. But I have the beans growing, peppers growing, plenty of space to grow more. This is going to be a strawberry tower. I bought three plants that I put up top. They're sending out all kinds of runners. These runners will populate all these pockets and I will be able to plant this whole container, 30 pockets, with the cost of just buying three plants. And these are, if you're interested, they're seascape ever-bearing strawberries. That will take some time, but once these are um, all, what do I wanna say? <laughs> once these are filled with the strawberry plants, they are perennials. I leave them in here. My Januarys get down into the teens and 20s. They freeze, strawberries come back. This tower, tower will keep producing strawberries for years to come. Just a quick look into the fruit area. Blueberries will be here in about three weeks. Massive amounts. And when they start turning a light blue, light purple, that's when the uh, catbirds come and eat them. And I didn't have them for the first year but they came the second year and a lot of birds migrate. So once they kind of get a taste or know that there's blackberries like over there, blueberries around, they'll just drop in here at the right time and they will eat what they want to eat. So here's something interesting. And since all the plants are getting it, it is a concern. The tops of the blueberry plants are dying off. And usually if it's a watering issue, it starts at the bottom. So I'm like, well, why is it starting up here at the top? I have no idea what that is. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and water everything, give them a light feeding, and then start trying to research what exactly is going on. So that's new to me. That's one of the reasons I like walking around the garden is to see what's happening and it's interesting because if I look real quick it's not happening on this side it's just happening on that side hmm well I hope the plants are okay strawberries just coming in full force and I think we could kind of wrap up in here potatoes are doing alright they're starting to yellow out some of them normally do that come June that's when you know that they're ready to harvest. The greens will yellow and brown out. You'll have to change. And I should have potatoes in a few weeks. Oh, there's one more place I want to show you. Peppers are coming in right there, California Wonder. This section still is not doing well. And if you look in close, you see these little black dots, like right there? Those are flea beetles, and they're hopping around. They're back. So, they come regularly. I have to dust and take care of them. I'll dust this evening. But this whole space, the plants just aren't dark green enough. I've been feeding them regularly with the fish emulsion. So, I don't know, something might be going around in the soil level, but we'll stick with it. I wanted to show you the uh, dwarf tomato section and then we'll wrap up. But most importantly, like, you, you know, here we go again. I'm going to also cut these branches off because maybe something's traveling down the branch I don't know but you want to go out in the garden look for the pests look for the diseases catch them early do your preventive spraying keep notes you know run a journal or write in a journal ask people that have been gardening for a while what comes to your area this way you'll be ready leeks watermelons are looking good that's a black mission fig that I covered to protect from our winter here. Looks great, hopefully I get some figs. And here are the dwarf tomatoes, all different sizes. And they're looking 
really, really healthy. Those are micro toms, really small to ones that get four feet and four feet tall. Yeah, ones that are under 12 inches, tomatoes get 12 to 18 inches tall and some that get about two feet tall. But you can plant a lot of tomatoes in a small space if you go with the determinant and the dwarf varieties. All right, thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And now that the heat is coming in in most areas, or will be in your area, the pests, the diseases will be rolling in. So just be ready for them. Give them a little bit of spray before they become, before the problems show up, and your garden will thank you for it. Thanks for watching.